The Black Cauldron. Out of all the animated films Disney has ever done, this one, along with Home on the Range, are the ones that the company wants you to forget the most. What was supposed to be a new chapter for the animation studio, where the new animators are now in complete control of crafting their own Disney movie, became a total disaster. Which led the movie to be a box office bomb. In fact, it was infamously known that it did so bad, the Care Bears movie was more successful. You could tell the studio was at its lowest point when audiences at the time felt that this thing was more appealing to watch. So now that we have the opportunity to take a look at what is referred to as the Black Sheep of Disney, will it now find new appreciation as an underrated gem, or is the film nothing more than a curse for Disney? Let's find out. The Story Since it is crafted as a fantasy medieval film based on the Chronicles of Prydain novels, it focuses on being a character-driven story where we follow Tarin and his newly found friends on a quest to find and destroy the Black Cauldron before it gets into the hands of the Horned King. That choice of storytelling is probably the movie's biggest mistake. How can you leave this in the hands of characters that have almost nothing to offer? With most fantasy movies of its kind, having good characters is important, but the main focus is usually about the world around them. What are the forces of good and evil? What magic does it have? What kind of special creatures are there? What are the important elements that would make us want to revisit this magical world? In The Black Cauldron, it only answers a few of those questions and barely show much of them. Sure, there can be some extraordinary moments and can give some form of entertainment, but a lot of those times are taken away in order to see the characters just stand there and talk. As a result, it just ends up making this movie feel mostly dull, and that's why making this character-driven was a bad idea. Uh, I, I'm an assistant pig keeper. Oh, what a pity. I was so hoping for someone who could help me escape. Since audiences can't get emotionally invested onto the heroes, it's hard to feel the sense of peril and adventure when they either explore new places or fight off the Horn King's army. The only time I could think of when the movie would get exciting was when the Horn King uses the cauldron's powers. At least something unique and interesting is happening, and it's from someone that can be worth remembering. Outside of that, all that's left is a plot that has some material to work with and doesn't even bother using them. It's not that the story itself is bad, it's more that the execution made a magical journey feel boring. The Animation No matter on which side of the fence you would be about this movie, at least we can all admit that Disney did some nice animation onto the film. As I've stated before, this was the studio's first movie that was purely made by the new animators at the time after the old artist from the age of Walt Disney stepped down. The most positive thing that I could say about this movie is that you could visually tell the enthusiasm put into it. It presents a good level of draftsmanship onto the characters, while also giving the right amount of smooth and more realistic-like movements with some variations. There are those like Fluter Flam and Creeper that have a more eccentric and playful tone, while others like the Horn King would take everything slowly in order to be more threatening. Also, as a more fantasy-oriented project, the film also presents a strong use of effects, rather it be through light, smoke, or other magical properties. Funny enough, it's actually one of Disney's films that would visually show the most use of magic in that fashion. As the execution on the animation is pretty great, the one criticism there would be is regarding how it looks conceptually. In terms of the designs, it looks like it's using the default Disney look. Like some of the characters look so bland that you could dress them up in anything and you're set for an entirely different movie. However, that would only apply to the human characters. The more supernatural ones, thankfully, have their own distinctive look. With the backgrounds, again, they look very well made, 
but it's just what they represent looks a little too plain, like a forest, or a castle, or a cave. This is why the world of the movie doesn't leave much to the imagination. It's not Disney's best animation, because it doesn't push the boundaries of creativity, but I do admire the dedication to make this look good. The characters. So you want to make a movie about these guys, right? Make it all about them. Okay, okay, I getcha. Well, uh, hope you don't mind me asking, but, um, why would you do that? These are some of the most bland and one-dimensional Disney characters they've ever made, which is what really is holding this movie down. Let's start off with Tarin. He's the main character that aspires to be a great warrior. It is true that most other Disney characters start off like that, dreaming of becoming a better person than they are now. With Tarin, however, that's all he is. Throughout the movie, he always talks about wanting to be a warrior and no longer wanting to be an assistant pig keeper, but doesn't actually do anything. In fact, he screws up more than actually saves the day, and whenever he does something actually heroic, it's more because the sword actually does all the hard work for him. Phew, I'd say it was the sword's magic. But it takes a great warrior to handle a sword like this. <laughs> but still, it is a magic sword. But don't think that Tarin is the only one that sucks at being a character. A Lanwi is capable of presenting confidence without showing any personality or depth in her. Gurgi is nothing more but the cute comic relief. Creeper is the generic villain's assistant, and Flutterflam is the other comic relief where he's a bard that has a harp that would break a string whenever he lies. Admittedly, the latter would have some potential to be a good character, but it's too bad that the movie doesn't do anything about it. So, yeah, these characters basically suck. But, there is one saving grace out of all of them. If there's one thing worth remembering about this movie, it would have to be the Horned King, one of the darkest Disney characters ever created. Sure, he may not be the most complex villain, but his threatening appearance and a solid performance by John Hurt truly presents how he is an evil king with a lot of power that you don't want to mess with. Arise, my messengers of death. Our time. Arrived. I'll also give credit to the witches for adding some Mad Madam Mim style fun to some scenes, but they sadly don't appear often and they did give us one of the most awkward boob scenes in Disney history. While the Horn King is awesome, it's not enough for me to forgive this film for having such forgettably bland characters. I wouldn't go as far and say that this is among their worst, but this is definitely one of the weakest Disney animated films. The Black Cauldron may have some great animation and an underrated villain, but it's not enough to keep it away from being a boring movie with an uninterestingly dull story and one-dimensional characters that barely do anything to make audiences care for them. If you are either a Disney fan or an animation fan, this is the kind of film that you have to see it at least once in your life. I'm not saying that this is a must watch, it's just something that you could do so you could at least say that you have seen it. What your thoughts will be afterwards will be all up to you. But if I may give you advice before you look at this one, it's that even if this is from Disney, don't expect too much out of it. But hey, hope you like the Horn King! This is Animat, and if I may speak a little bit about the Black Cauldron, there is one interesting behind-the-scenes facts that actually does explain a little bit about 
How is it that this movie, while not necessarily bad, it's definitely one of the weakest among the films made by Walt Disney Animation Studios? You see, you gotta keep in mind, this was all created during the early 80s, and it ended up being released in 1985. Now, during that time, the Walt Disney Company was going through a major transitional period, where the higher-ups decided to go and change leaderships, where they decided to bring in Michael Eisner and Frank Wells to be the head honchos of the entire company, and also bring in Jeffrey Katzenberg to be leading up the movies division. Now, interestingly enough, you might not even believe this, but at the time, Jeffrey Katzenberg had zero knowledge in animation. I know nowadays he is a little bit considered an animation legend, considering his massive contributions, especially with DreamWorks Animation, but yeah, at the time when he got hired by Disney to lead the Walt Disney to, to lead Walt Disney Pictures, he knew zero about animation. Like he was completely clueless. So when he saw the production of the Black Cauldron, he saw that there were massive problems, and he find it a little bit difficult to see how a company like Disney would sell a movie like the Black Cauldron. So Jeffrey Katzenberg went into the crew and decided to ask them, hey, can you go and try to edit out some stuff? And at the time, there was no way to actually edit an animated feature. The process is a lot more different than how it is for live action films. So Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, a little bit ignorant in his head, he decided, hey, you know what, guys, hold on. Let me show you how we can go and edit an animated film. So, with a little snips here and there, it ultimately came out with the movie that you see today. And we are very well aware about the missing scenes, but we don't know specifically what they are or what they look like in motion. So, yeah, overall, The Black Cauldron really is the kind of story that, you know, it's the kind of film that kind of got screwed over by the higher-ups, where they intervened, they demanded some changes, and they really were persistent with it and tried to really chop down a few stuff or add in some unnecessary things, and ultimately came out with a movie that would be considered rather subpar. Now, I know this would not explain all the problems that The Black Cauldron has, but, you know, it is a little bit of an interesting factoid and would explain a few things about the current state of The Black Cauldron and why is it that Disney itself doesn't really talk about it as much as many of their other classics like Beauty and the Beast, Fantasia, Snow White, Pinocchio, and many more. But anyways, that will pretty much be it with The Black Cauldron, and now it is time that we shall go and move on to a Patreon request. Yes, and this time it shall be coming from Rick Green. So I just want to say right now, if you guys would like to be like Rick and you want to go and support my work and get some awesome rewards at the same time, including seeing my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put into the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. So, with all that said, um, I actually do have some very specific instructions on how to give you guys a little bit of a hint of the next review in which Rick suggested to me. So, I actually got the, re the message right over here on my phone. So, uh, apparently, uh, Rick wants me to tell you that it is time for spookiness. We shall go into a world that fits this, but we shall also go to the past where we shall laugh out loud. You know, guys, if I could be very honest, if I did not know what the next one is going to be, I would be absolutely clueless. I mean, not even the music that you're hearing would give me an idea of what's going to be coming up.
I've had it. Goodbye. <laughs> 